Good afternoon, Shana Lee. How are you today? Hi, afternoon, Mr. Shanda. I'm fine. Good night.
All right, so there's a quick question. Well, let me start again. So good afternoon to those who joined after I said good afternoon. Um, but in the meantime, for those of you who did not do that one do no question since we met last Thursday, I'm going to answer to use the couple of minutes that I'm giving the others to join, um, which is about another nine minutes to see if you can get the question done up. Um, thanks for the person who I saw um, reposting some of the information in the WhatsApp group for those who joined late. Um, really responsible. Thank you. So go ahead, do the stuff. Um, actually starting with a writing tablet and um, we can do the thing. Hey, Kelvita, how you do? You have um, little chips and, and um, popcorn ready for class. I'll soon come.
Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Ready or not, here I come. Um, for those who would have joined hereafter, good afternoon again. Um, I'm seeing, hmm, I'm seeing one and a half new persons. Um, Right. Okay, so <clears throat> question. How many of you were able to do the do no exercise that I gave you last class? Sure. Repeat, sir. And I'm saying, how many of you were able to do the do no exercise I left for you last class? I did it, sir. Good, good, good. Sir, good. I attempted it. So I don't know if you're right. We can't fully understand. I got kicked off the last part of the class. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, is there anyone who did not give an attempt at all to the question outside of those who uh, not even necessarily outside of those. Ottaline, Ottaline, mm -mm, careful now. Um, outside of those who just join it like Ottaline. Um, Ryan, now we have to know what it was. Say never tried. Big boss, unmute for me. Mr. Ryan Esquire. Sir, you hear me now? I'm hearing you now, Papa. You know, do my work. Yes, sir. Oh, me too. Sir, no, you know, one of my, you know, no, sir, I, mean, I don't, I didn't get to read. You know, one of my style, actually. But, um, no, sir, apparently I wasn't added to the group until today when you see me introduce yourself in the group. Mm -hmm. That was when I was finding out about it. When I, I saw a person talking about it, that's why I inquired where it was. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, work have me all day today. So I never get to do it. All right, never mind. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, so, um, Aviana, you did it, Tom? No, sir. 
So was it the um last question where um you got zero over zero instead of just indeterminate? Yes, miss. No, sir. All right. All right. So. Uh, so we're going, we're, going, we're going to do this thing now. So whenever sir gives homework and you don't do it, I'm going to throw around a collection plate. So I alone will go and buy the curry lobster and the sushi and everything and sit in front of all of them and just don't give them none. All right. What I want you to do <laughs> is complete all your assigned tasks. I, I have been sitting up and doing quite a bit of preparations for you guys. So I want my preparations not to go in vain, if you understand what I'm saying. So um, I'm gonna trust that this is the first offense and I will forgive you. I'm a forgiving person. Uh, thank you, Kelvita. I'm a forgiving person. So let us see what will happen. All right, I'm gonna write today. Um, I choose to write today on this thing, don't know why, but um, I'm gonna write today on a different device. And then we're gonna go into some serious examples today. So today's gonna be a day where we do a whole lot of work. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna introduce to you, even though I did that introduction last Thursday, but I'm going to do um, a few more versions and we can just get a whole lot of work out. So let me just do the, assign, uh, the assignments. Can somebody read it for me, please? Anybody, somebody? Extend to negative three x squared plus seven x plus twelve all over x plus three. Um, x squared plus seven x plus twelve all over, over x plus three. And x is tending to negative three. Negative three. Right. So what is going to happen now is that I have to factorize. So I'm going to have x squared plus seven x plus twelve, and I need to factorize that. So I'm factorizing x squared plus seven x plus twelve. I'm multiplying the coefficient of x squared by the constant. The coefficient of x squared is a number in front of x squared. What numbers in front of x squared is a one. One times constant 12 is 12. I need two numbers. When multiply by 12 is 12, but when added gives me seven, those numbers are four and three. So factors are four and three. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have x squared x squared plus 4x plus 3x plus 12. Then I'm going to group. And I'm group, I'm going to have x squared plus 4x in one bracket. And I'm going to leave what the middle sign every single time. I, I don't like what the C is operating here today at all. And then I'm going to have. 3x plus 12 in the other bracket. Now, what is common between x squared and 4x is going to be x. It's going to be x. And what is going to be left is going to be x. And what is going to be left when I take what x from that is going to be 4. And similarly, I'm going to have a 3 that is common. It's going to be x plus 4. So what I'm going to have is going to be x. x plus 3 times x plus four. And then, so those are my, those are my stops. I'm gonna rewrite the function. And in, in rewriting, I'm gonna have the limit. Uh, I'm gonna have the limit 
as x tends to negative 3 of x plus 3 times x plus 4 all over x plus 3. And what you find happening is that my x plus 3s cancel. So what I'm going to have left is the question as the limit as x tends to negative 3 of x plus 4. No, no, that is not. We would have we would have worked up top here where we would have gotten this to be zero over zero and we'd have said that is indeterminate. Right? We'd have gotten that to be indeterminate. So what we're gonna be doing now, now that we have our answer there, we are going to be saying x, which is negative three plus four is going to be equal to one. So the answer there is the limit of the function there will tend to one. All right, so the limit of that function tends to, to, to one. Are there any questions? They repeat from x plus four. Um, we kind of drop off after the exit. All right, no problem. Um, I don't have a clue <laughs> to what I'm uh, you know why, Arthur, Arthur Lee? Yeah, I know yeah. why. Why? Right. Tell me why. I miss the first classes. Yeah, true, true. Talk truth. All right. Um, I don't like my my writing device today. Um, it it is not what I'm accustomed to be seeing or the result that I'm getting from the writing. And it's not a case where when the fox can't get a good PC like it is so, that's not it at all. Um, so I'm going to abort this. So for those of you who need this, can you screenshot it for me, please? Because I'm going to be using another device and I'm going to remove this from the screen. So for those of you who need this, you can screenshot it for me, keep it, and then I'll go to the question um, somewhere else. Let me know when I can move, please. Thank you. Good evening again, sir. Hello. Good for me, sir. Well, I don't know if anybody is waiting. Okay. All right. So okay. if you have it, if you have it, try and you can always circulate it in the WhatsApp group. So I am going right, to move. Sir, Thanks. are you hearing me, sir? Yes. Yes, I am, Sash. Um. I put a question sign at number three. I'm going to ask you if you could assist me in understanding it, please. For oh, sure. Okay. Um, um, oh, no, I'm it's on 100 US. Uh -huh. Yes, Otherly, you get that thousand. <laughs> I'm going to put my number in the chat. Can the person who is the administrator for the group admit to it, please? Thank you. They will. Very responsive students. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to change my um, screen because. As I said before, I don't like what I'm looking. Uh, so, Sash, this is the number three. You put your, que your question sign too, right here. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So let me just go back to this question here. Forgive me, I didn't do it here, so I was figuring that I could write instead of typing today because I would get through faster with writing. But um, clearly. Uh, copy. It has a mind of its own today. Uh, all right, so I am factorizing. Let me just go and just copy here. See that I'm being lazy now. Copy. Ooh. So undo. Let me do the question how I'd want you to do it. All right. So 
you need to come down here so because you're taking a nice space. All right, so what I'm doing, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is to, whenever we get the question, remember, we are not using the, the numerical approach. We're just going to be substituting the values into the function. So what I'm looking at is anywhere in the function, I see x, I'm going to put negative 3. Anywhere in the function, I see x, I'm going to substitute negative 3. And I'm going through this because we have new persons joining. Anywhere in the function, I see x, I'm putting negative 3. So all of that now becomes negative 3 squares is going to be 9. And negative 3 times 7 is going to be a negative 21. And that's a plus 12. And negative 3 times 1 is simply negative 3. So that's what it looks like. I'm pressing pause for you to tell me that you are with me right there. Very much so. Okay. So anywhere in the function you see x, you're going to put negative 3. Remember, x is not equal to negative 3. We went through all of that. But because I'm using a calculations approach now, we are just going to question. Go ahead. Um, when solving this, you would have to do it like this before you factorize? Yes, on the bunches. Because yes, on the bunches. Um, very good question. Yes, because you see, you, you don't know whether or not it's going to be indeterminate. So you have to check to see if it's going to be of an indeterminate form. And I love that question, particularly because um, I think Ryan was the one who, who circulated some past papers today. Thanks again, Pops. Um, the, the very first question in the question, um, in the past paper um, thing, I did it today and I was like, ha, ah, interesting. So that question, I, I am loving it. And you will see why it is that I'm loving that question. Right, just hold on one minute because I just want to do, I may even just jump and do that question um, afterwards since it's not um, connected to another topic that I want to move on to. All right, so, so yes, you're correct. So we need to find out whether or not it's indeterminate because we need to know where else to go. Because when you substitute the question, when you substitute the value into the function, you are not sure what form it will take because it may so happen that you get an answer other than zero over zero. Remember when you get zero over zero, what it is saying to you that is of an indeterminate form. Indeterminate means they can't work it. There's something inside of the function preventing the true limit to come out. So therefore I now need to go and do surgery on this function to find out what is inside of it, preventing the true something from coming out. And that surgery is going to be factorization. But before we reach a factorization, I need to look at it to see what is happening. 9 minus 21, mm -mm. 9 plus 12 is going to be 21. 21 minus 21 is 0. And that, so I can say to you that it's going to be equals to 0 over 0. <clears throat> now, the mere fact that I get 0 over 0, um, we can say we can say the function is of and in the e -T -E -R, in, in, it's on an indeterminate form, right? So we can say that the function is of an indeterminate form. So we now need to go and so we need to T E R F O R perform one of the following. Uh, let's open the code of one of the following um, methods. So we're going to first, we're going to either one, either we're going to rationalize, R A T I O N A L I. We're going to either rationalize, factorize, or number three. Simplify. L I F Y. Sometimes we can't spell them easy ways, you know. General story. We did not try to spell also and put A S O L S A S L O. It was like, oh, this looks so wrong. For the life of me, I couldn't see the mistake in it. All right. So I want you to look at what is happening here. So the function is of an indeterminate form. So once the function is of an indeterminate form, sir, how do you know it's of an indeterminate form? See it right here, sir. 
to 0 over 0. 0 over 0. 0 over 0. 0 over 0 is the indeterminate form. 0 over 0 is the indeterminate form. zero over zero is the indeterminate form all right so once the function once you substitute into the function and you get zero over zero you're going to say that an, it is of an indeterminate form um sorry so is zero over zero the only indeterminate form no you have other indeterminate forms and it's just two of them that you're going to be introduced to here the first of which is going to be zero over zero so once you get the function when you substitute to be zero over zero it simply means that, the, it, that the, it's of an indeterminate form and you have to go perform some duties. What duties, sir? You can either rationalize, factorize, or simplify. You're going to either rationalize, factorize, or simplify. You're going to either rationalize, factorize or simplify. So one of these three little um, operations here will, will dissect what is causing the problem so you can eliminate it. All right, you're gonna find out what is causing the problem so that it can be eliminated at once. So let us go. So we you know, look at the function and recognize that we need to factorize that we need to factorize F A C T O R I. So we need to factorize the numerator. <coughs> so we need to factorize the numerator. So you see, it's one of these things. Either rationalize, factorize, or simplify. So we need one of these three little things. Rationalize, factorize, or simplify. Rationalize. Let me not even do. Let me do it. All right, so I'm going to either rationalize, factorize, or simplify. Now, I look at the function and I recognize that it is, a quad it is quadratic. And because it is quadratic now, I am not going to rationalize, I'm not going to simplify, I'm going to factorize. Because in my guess, since that the denominator, we spoke about the denominator can't be equal to zero because it's going to be um, a math error, does not exist. We can suspect that this x plus 3 in the denominator is what is causing the problem. This x plus 3 is what is causing the problem. So clearly, one could assume that there's an x plus 3 in the numerator that must come out because of one year. If I don't do nothing with this x plus 3, I will always have this negative 3 plus 3. And the negative 3 plus 3 is going to give me 0. Anyway, take it. 3 minus 3 is 0, and the twin of it is going to be negative 3 plus 3, all right? So clearly this negative, this x plus 3 here is my, is my source of problem. So let us go. We're going to factorize the function. So in factorizing, oh dear, that's not the function, x squared plus 7, x plus 12, x squared plus 7, x plus 12. We'll see what happens when we just copy and paste. All right, so x squared plus 7, x plus 12. So in doing this, we are going to be multiplying the coefficient of x squared by the constant. We are multiplying the coefficient of x squared by the constant. The coefficient of x squared is a number in front of x squared. The coefficient of x squared is a number in front of x squared. Let me see if I have that narrative somewhere that I could just um, possibly copy and just put there instead of having to. All right, we would have taught this. Um, we would have thought to see in that topic, all right. Um, Sir. Yes, please. Uh, Kelvin, I want to tell you that she never appeared like me, so GPS. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, so you know what that means for you. You have to go double learn so you can teach her the mathematics that is afterwards. No, mommy, no, that's why I just that's why I emphasize the mathematics and not your mathematics. Calculus one we're talking about. All right. All right. 
All right, I'm trying to find this narrative somewhere, students, so I can give to you, but uh, it may mean that I have to. All right, so I found one, don't know what it is, look like, but um, I, will, I will work with it. All right, so let me just, let me just, um, <clears throat> So we're going to multiply the coefficient of x squared, which is 1, by the constant, which is positive 12. Let us put that piece. Then I know need two numbers. So that when multiplied together gives positive 12, but when added gives me positive 7. is actually to be positive four and a positive three. All right, let me just fix up that in a manner that we can. Um, Sir, what's the similarity between this and a simultaneous equation? Um, five, one is the east, one is the west. The, the similarity here is, well, is a factorization. So simultaneous is going to be a different method. So it's like fricassee chicken and curry chicken. Are the two, two, uh, two same chicken, you know? But one is a far different method than the other. It tastes different and look different and smell different. Everything different about it, right? But the simultaneous equation is, is one of those options that you will never use for this area. See here, you're either going to rationalize, you're going to factorize, or you're going to be simplifying. But I'm so very happy that you spoke about simultaneous equation because I shall come to that sometime later. All right? Well, thanks for your question, though. Okay, so, so we're going to factorize the numerator. We're going to be multiplying the coefficient of x squared, which is 1. The coefficient of x squared is a number in front of x squared. The coefficient of x squared is a number in front of x squared. And I'm going to put time on this because you're a big school math student. The coefficient of x squared is a number in front of x squared. So I'm going to be multiplying the coefficient of x squared by the constant, and the constant is 12. See it right here, so? See it right here, so? Then now I need two numbers so that when multiplied, give 12, but when added, will give me a 7. So the factors are going to be positive 4 and positive 3. So how you know that 4 times 3 gives me 12? and four plus three gives me seven. So what it is that I'm doing, I want you to watch what I'm doing here. Let me spotlight it so you can see what I'm talking about. This one is being multiplied by this 12 to give me this 12. So now I need two numbers. When multiplied gives 12, will give me this same product, but when added is when it gives me the middle number. So the middle number here, so the seven here are the seven here. So now any two old number we want, me no want 11, me no want 5, me no want no other number, me want the number in the middle. All right? So everything that I'm doing up here relates to this question. I'm multiplying the first term, the coefficient of x squared, that is, by the constant term to give me 12. And then now when I multiply it, I should get that product. I notice I'm seeing that product because the coefficient of x squared will be 2. So in if this word, 2 to be 2 times 12 to give me 24. So it means that I would need two numbers and multiply together gives 24, but added give me the middle number. So that's why I'm being very particular in saying the coefficient of x squared, because the coefficient of x squared can be any number. It does not have to be one. It could be a positive number, it could be a negative number, it could be a fraction, it could be anything. Right? So let me go again. So I'm multiplying the coefficient of x squared. Sir, what the coefficient of x squared is again? Thank you for asking. It is always that number in front of x squared. That means, sir, the coefficient of x is the number in front of x, R2. Sir, then, what is the coefficient of p? Simple, the number in front of p. And q, the number in front of q. So what's the point? Coefficient is the number in front of. So once you hear a coefficient, once you hear me speak about coefficient, look for the number where they're in front of the sum t. That's what it is. All right, so I multiply the coefficient of x squared by the constant. I multiply the coefficient of x squared by the constant. So it's 1 times 12 gives me 12. Hear my story. 
I need two numbers. When multiply together, will give me that product, which is 12. But when added, we give me the middle number. So I want two numbers. When I add together, will give me seven. But when I multiply them together, will give me 12. And the only two numbers that we can think about right here, so will be four and three. So I would have now found my factors, four and three. So what I'm doing here, I'm going to say x plus 4x plus 2x mm -mm, plus 3x. And of course, that's plus 12. So what I'm doing here, I'm splitting this middle number. I'm splitting this 7x into 4x and 3x. Let me tell you why I split it, you know. Um, so when I was going to little school and teacher teach this, why you split it? Just do this something else, ask the question, no? I said, okay, fine. So for years, I was spitting. I don't know why I'm spitting. But this is the reason, and I'm going to tell you. I'm spitting because I now need to group. I can't group to get two brackets with the same number, something in there with only three terms. Because one bracket, we have either one and two, or two and one. And that's no fun. That's no fun. So I have to split this one here so that the first one can get two. And the second one can get two, sir. So which one is going to write first? It no matter. It does not matter which one of the first, which one of them you write first. So if I wanted, I could have written x squared plus three x, and then the four x, and then the plus twelve. This here does not matter. Let me just take it back down to little school. We call this commutative. So the commutative law says, and I know you do this in discrete mathematics. The commutative law is saying four plus three is seven, and three plus four is seven. You know why? They are the twin. Four plus three is equal to three plus four, which is equal to seven. They are the twin, right? So you flip them, you still get the same answer. So we say that addition is commutative. So if you want to go write Aviana, x squared plus three x plus four x plus 12. Mm -hmm. And Jeremy decides to write x squared plus four x plus three x plus 12. At the end of the day, both of you get the same number of marks. Once it is that you complete the question correctly. But for sure, this stage will get the same number of marks. All right? Now, <clears throat> So I'm going to be grouping. So the first term, which is this now, because I'm grouping them into terms, is going to have my x squared plus 4x. I'm going to have my x squared plus 4x. And the other one is going to give me my 3x plus 12. No. Hear my story now. Hear my story. Is there any sign right in the middle? I want you to see what we're talking about, what this middle business, you know, because I don't want nobody to leave <coughs> with any other idea. So I shall highlight it. Is there any sign in the middle right here, sir? At the same sign, I'll go come and separate the two terms in another bracket. So if you have a negative sign right here, sir, try and make sure you say put to a negative sign right here, sir. If I have a positive sign, go back to the positive sign, yes, sir. The same sign up here, so I'll go be the same sign down right here, so. All right? So here what I'm saying. This is my story. So I'm going to be grouping two terms. So it's going to be x squared plus 4x, bam, in one bracket. Leave out the middle sign every time. Then I'm going to have 3x plus 12 in the other bracket. All right? Then I'm going to ask myself, what is common here that is common there? And I'm going to say, sir, it's x. So I take out the x. What is left? Sir, another x. What is left on this side? Positive four, sir. So you need to change that and put plus four. All right. And then now you ask yourself the other question. What the, the plus sign is so I'm going to be right just again. May I carry it back? So I have to be consistent. What is common here that is common here? Sir, three. Or you know, because three is a factor of itself and three is a factor of 12. So therefore, because it is a factor, I can factorize it. I, I, I just say it come from, you know, factor come from factorizing, you know, right? So I'm taking out this three right here, so boom. And then I'm going to have X that is left. And when I take out three from this 12, I'm going to have four. Sir, so how you know that? Three times four is 12. Now watch this. Any something in this parentheses must be the same something in other one down here, so. Because if this one here, differs from this one here, it means that the question wrong. Can't work, I mean work. So you have to recognize that this one here, x plus four, has to be the same something that is inside right here. So then sir, what if you have x plus four right here and then x minus four are two different something that? 
two different something. So it has to be the same thing. Now, once it is that we get the same thing there, we can go ahead, go ahead and factor it out. So because x plus 4 is common, I can factor out x plus 4. And then what is left is what I'm going to put in the other parentheses. So the x plus 4 is common, so I take it out. What is left? What left for me to call is x plus 4. That x here, I'm going to write it back right here. So when we talk about that x plus 4, what left? The positive 3 or so, I'm going to write it back right here. So and this is in my factorized form. This is in my factorized form. You know what I'm believing I should do? Um, let me bigify this thing a little bit. I'm going to leave this up on screen for two minutes. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to read through this narrative and look at right here. So, and I'll come back to you. I'm stepping away for two minutes.
All right. So having given you two times, two minutes to do the stop, I'm going to ask you now to ask me your questions. Is there something that you are seeing there that you're not seeing that you can ask me? And I'll be more than happy to answer you. Go ahead, please. Sir. Yes, please. For the last line, does it matter which order I come in or you have to do it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter. So I can have X plus three times X plus four. Okay. So I did say to you, and that's a good question. So I did say to you that addition is commutative. Multiplication is also commutative. Let's just check to see if there's any truth to it. What is three times two? Anybody? Six, sir. Six, sir. How about is two times three? Six again, sir. Yeah, man. So in no matter how I put the something there, eh? if it's a two times three or three times two, that's a twin. So I'm going to get it to be the same answer. So once it is, I can get that twin, I can say that it's commutative. No, Addition, subtraction is not commutative because that's a four minus one. It's going to be three, but one minus four, a negative three. Two different answers. So, addition, so subtraction is not commutative. And one divided by four and four divided by one does not give you the same result. So division is not commutative. So the commutative law speaks about the addition and multiplication. So very good question. X times X plus three times X plus four, or X plus four times X plus three, both will give you the same answer. All right, moving. Um, <laughs> yeah. Watch the last dinner, sir. <laughs> no man, I, I just saw seven messages in the chat and then I decided that I'm gonna um look in there and I saw where it is that you sing about Kelvito. Um Zidane, if you're not allowed to sneak into my class without even saying good afternoon, teacher. Uh, what, uh, what that's good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. That is going to cost you about a hundred and twenty thousand pounds. No, I'm not funny that you know. All right, let's go. All right. Um. All right. So what I'm going to do now, and this question is taking long, but never mind. I, I you, you must understand what is happening here. <clears throat> oh, I don't finish it yet. So now we recognize we had to factorize and we factorize. So I'm now going to rewrite the question. So I'm going to copy, forgive me here. I don't have time to do, go to the software and get all of that again. So W-R-I-T, rewriting the question, P-U-E-S-T-I-O-N will give me that. And I'm going to copy this, copy, copy. And then I'm just going to paste it up top right here. So and then I'm good to go. So I have now rewritten the question. It's the same question, sir. I didn't change it. All I did was put it in a different form. I just put it in a different form. You get the KFC, you can't eat it all the following morning. You warm it up with the rice, a little bread, and that butter. All right? So it's the same thing. Same KFC chicken you're eating, just a different form. You're not eating it raw. You're just putting some ketchup on it, and you're cooking it down. All right? Um, Hello? All right, guys. Come on. I'm here, man. I'm here. So we have x plus four times x plus three. Now, if you look at it, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write this here because when I send you this notes that I'm doing here, I really wanted to write, but the device is um, not behaving itself. It's not of a good um, behavior. So, you know, it, it just, I, 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 I did it this way. And then I'm going to put this. No. I'm going to put this, no, come on, just wrong. And then, all right, my system is, has a mind of its own today, jeez. All right, so no, you remember I said to you that I suspect that the X plus three in the denominator is what is causing the problem. Sir, how, how could you look at it and say to me that the X plus three in the denominator is causing the problem? Because if I don't get rid of this x plus 3 in the denominator, I will still have this negative 3 to put beside it, to substitute for the value of x. 
And every single time, today, tomorrow, and the next day, negative three plus three is going to be equal to zero. So in order for me to get a value for this indeterminate form, I have to get rid of the source of problem. So I recognize the source of the problem by looking at it. And you too will recognize the source of the problem um, as we get a little bit more seasoned in doing this. So I'm going to cancel those. And when I cancel those, what I'm going to be left with now is simply the limit, um, as you'd have seen me do in the question just now, because I'm actually repeating the question for those who just joined us. Um, to that. So that question is now in a more simplified form. Can I simplify that any further? Absolutely not. So I can now say the limit of that function as x tends to negative 3 of the function, it means that anywhere in the function I see x, I'm going to put negative 3. That's what it means. Anywhere in the function I see x, I'm going to put negative 3. And what that means is that negative 3 plus 4 is going to be equal to positive 1. So then the function here tends to positive one. And that's my answer. The function tends to positive one. And that's my answer. Sarah, so the question then long. The question is really not long enough. It's just that because I'm doing, it's just that I'm, I'm doing the explanation and it seems a little, um, a little lengthy. And I really want to go through the explanation so that when you're doing the question on your own, you should be perfectly fine. So whenever you get a question of this nature, that's exactly what it is that you have to do. All right, so what I'll do, Sash asks me to, all right, are there any questions regarding this one? Sir, how many marks oh, do they get for that question? How many who? Marks do they get for that question, one? No, man, crazy, you get about five marks to this man. Okay. Come on, okay, no, because remember, no. All right, so, well, as we go, you'll see me do the question in a more shortened version. I am doing the question because I want to explain what is happening. So let me, you know, I, do, I didn't have to write this because you're supposed to know this in your headspace that once a function is going to be of an indeterminate form, I'm only writing it for notes purpose, you know? So once it's of an indeterminate form, it's one of three things, either going to rationalize, factorize, or simplify, all right? And then you should know this out of the head to factorize the numerator here or the quadratic Q, U, A, D, R, A, T. Let me just be more general. To factorize the quadratic expression in x, p, r, e, s, s, i, o, n. You're always going to be multiplying the coefficient of x squared by the constant. So this is something that you're supposed to know to the headspace. So you don't have to write it because I expect you to know it. As a matter of fact, you see all of this here, I wouldn't expect you to write this because at some point in time, I expect you to move. I expect you at some point in time to move from here down to here because you're going to be factorizing my inspection. I only do here because I want you to, um, I, I don't think in your year two, you did any math courses, right? Because I think your discrete math is first semester and then your problem starts is second semester and then you'd have gone to year two and never did any math, so you may get a little rusty. So that's why I'm doing this right here. So, all right, this piece that I'm putting a little imaginary box over, I don't need to see it necessarily. I need to see you move from here to here because it's big school. So you're factorizing by inspection. Having factorized by inspection, you're going to go ahead and substitute the quadratic for here to here. And then you're going to show the calculation. Then you're going to do your substitution because you're using the calculations approach. You get your result and you're good to go. All right. Um, Sash asks, uh, sir. Can you do number three for me, please? You see, because you know we are told all of them something like them. You can do that thing as only me can do it. Because I'm the teacher. All right. That was the one like that where X is going to infinity. Yeah, man, that's where we plan to go today. I'm only doing this because Sash asked a question, but that's real, that's that's a plan of action for today. That's on my agenda for today. Okay. All right, Sash. So you asked a question uh, to do, look at this one here. And you said, sir, negative five. Oh, but sir, this x plus five, and where x tends to negative five, I can have a zero existing in the numerator. There is no problem for me having the zero in the numerator. Yeah, man, I'm allowed to have a zero in the numerator, just not allowed to have the zero in the denominator. 
but I'm allowed to have a zero in the numerator. Just remember that. So I'm allowed to have the numerator as a zero, but not the denominator. So what I'm going to be doing here now is doing the same thing. I need to check to see if it is of an indeterminate form and um, go ahead and just do my calculation. So it's going to be negative five plus five. And then anywhere in the function here, I see X. Copy. Anywhere in the function, I see X, I'm going to put negative five. And this is 8x, and that's 15, and that one is going to be negative 5. So that's, so look here, so there's no difference with what it is that I would have done with that question. Matter of fact, you know what I'm going to be doing here? Cut, uh -uh. undo, cut. What I'm going to be doing here? to show you that I can shorten the, the question equal case. I can, I, can, I can delete that line to show you now that, look at that. That is going to be zero. Um, negative five, negative five plus five is zero. And negative five squared is 25. Eight times five is 40. So this is 25 minus 40, that's negative 15. Negative 15 plus 15 is zero. So I have my indeterminate form right here. So because it's indeterminate, we need to perform one of the following methods. Either we're going to factorize, simplify, or rationalize. Right? And then now, what I am going to do, I am going to take off this. Just to show you how it is. No, I can't, I can't work on my numerator because my numerator is almost in a simplified form. My denominator looks a little cumbersome. So it's a denominator that I'm going to be working with. So I'm going to have 8x and plus 15, <clears throat> and then I'm going to factorize. Then what teacher is going to do? Should I? Let me factorize by inspection. So I'm factorizing by inspection here. So look at what is going to happen. I need two numbers for rubbishness. I'm multiplying the coefficient of x squared by the constant. I'm multiplying the coefficient of x squared by the constant. The coefficient of x squared is 1. The constant is 15. So I'm multiplying the coefficient of x squared by the constant. So it's going to be 1 times 15 is 15. Here's my story. I need two numbers. When multiplied together will give me 15, but when added will give me this middle number. That middle number is 8. What two numbers we talk about? 3, Three five. Five. Very good. And guess what? This question is so easy for you because everything plus. So I'm going to put 1 at 3 and 1 at 5. Simple. Easy 1, 2, 3. All right, so that's what that is. And then I can go ahead now and rewrite the question. Rewrite the question. And that was x plus five in the numerator. Yes. I can go ahead and rewrite the question now and put it as x plus five and break up all of that. And then right here, I'll recognize that my x plus five is common to the numerator and the denominator. So because it is common to both numerator and denominator, I'm going to go ahead and do my cancellation, right? I'm removing this extra step. So I'm showing you how the question can be shortened. Though. What I'm going to be left with is going to be one over x plus three. I'm going to be left with one over x plus three. One over x plus three. So that's what I'm going to be left with. So what am I talking about? Oh, it is going to negative five. I got nervous a while ago when I saw that there. It's going to negative five. Do you notice that every time I write a line, I still write the limit as x tends to whatever? It's very important. You can't not write it. It's not allowed. That's illegal. So I'm going to have the limit now as x tends to negative one over negative three. So that is going to be equals to copy. Okay. So anywhere in the function, now I see x, I'm going to put negative 5. And negative 5 plus 3 is going to be negative 2. So I'm going to have 1 over negative 2. How much is 1 over negative 2? So how you get the 1 over negative? Um, 
We say one over negative two. Mm. Yeah, one over negative two. And a one over negative two. Mm. Sir, where the one come from, sir? All right. Good, 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 good question. So when I cancel, so X plus five into X plus five goes? One time. Yeah. See, the one, the one time up here, so I hit this. And when I cancel it out, it goes one time again to down. And one times X plus three, uh, X plus three. Sorry, but when you cancel it, you'll you get one. rid of it. Too. I'm going to pray for you. Charlene, was that you? No, sir. I was saying, um, how comes that was not done with the other question? It sure was. Let us go back to the other question down here. Because I did the numerator, we factorize. Right. I'm going to cancel this one. And it cancel this one. It left a one down here. And x plus four divided by one is the same thing as x plus four. Talk truth. All right, I get it now. Okay, sir. Very, very nice. Very nice. Repeat very that one, nice. please. So, so I can write a, I can write a number. Any number can be written as a rational number. Remember, I spoke about rational numbers that are numbers that are racial. So I can write two as a rational number. You know, it, it just sounds fancy. I can write two as a fraction. But I'm just putting it over one. So any number divided by one is the same number. <clears throat> Is the same number. So what I'm saying to you is, in this here question, this cancelled, this, so this into this goes one time, and this into this goes one time. So I have a one right here, so and a one right here. So, but one times x plus four is simply x plus four, and x plus four divided by one is simply x plus four. Right. So it's when it cancels, you don't get rid of it, you know. When you get rid of something, it means that it is no longer there. Talk truth. Hello, somebody? I mean, something is no longer there is a zero. But what we did right here is to, is to, cancel, is, is to, is to, is to cancel something that is common. All right? So that's why you have your, your positive one. Um, there, very important. So let's just go back to this one here now. So I can, I can delete this line and leave this one here as my final answer. I'm just being consistent. I'm going to just do that. All right, so I'm gonna leave this here. So I'm saying to you, this is factorization by inspection, F-A-C-T-O. O R I Z A T I O N factorization by inspection. What am I saying to you? You must not go and practice your factorization. Right? You must not go and practice your factorization. This one is a very similar thing. This one here is a difference of two squares. So you're going to be x plus one times x minus one. See yourself. X plus one times x minus one. This cancel into one time. That means I have a one in the numerator. Cancel this down here, so that means I just put x minus one here. And because we have one over x minus one, uh, x of four, four minus one are three, so we have one over three. So see how so I get my one over three, all right? Um, et cetera, et cetera. All right, any questions? I must move. Any questions? Sorry, come back up a little bit. I'm just um, rewriting the question for the second one. You know, if you do that, then I'm gonna send you the document. Sorry, I know, but I don't, I like to write and understand that. All right, then, hard work on write, because I can't read them too. Next time, how you just reaching? Sir, class? not there, sir. No. Go back down. Make down this one. From the year from something to six, yeah. right. I think. Okay, all right. Welcome, Ophelia. We want me to put this something on mommy. Um, rewriting the question for the second one. For the second one. Yeah, already factorized. Which one that? The, the one that I just did a while ago? Um, after did the x plus five and then you factorize you factorize it to x plus five and x plus three. Yeah, okay, yeah, see, try right. this one. Yeah, hurry up, mommy, hurry up. 
um, the, the, the Allah Lord, you should do this in class for today, but in, 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 um, in real terms, once it is that I type, um, I will send you the document, we can't wait to write. So I'll, I'll look to you because it's your first day and I want to be very nice to you on your first day. Um, but come tomorrow for the class, I mean Thursday for class, then I send it off, that's the time you need to write. All right, come on me, put some pep into that. So we need to move into the, um, the one now that deals with the infinity. So last week we had a conversation um, about um, infinity. And, you know, after class on Thursday, I went to bed. It was pretty late. And just before I fell asleep, I said to myself, Lord, how can I undo the misconceptions? How can I undo the misconceptions about, and you know what I was talking about, those of you who were present, um, in having a conversation about the, the, the question, the intuitive approach using the, um, the, 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 the something, the, the infinity um, and in terms of the division. So you will understand it a bit better, hopefully, in seeing this method, offering and moving, have to move on it. Yeah, man, I'm finished. Okay, so we're looking at the indeterminate form. Um, this is positive infinity. Now, remember, I said to you that there are different types of indeterminate form. Watch me. So, indeterminate form here. Um, this is the indeterminate form. <clears throat> That's the indeterminate form zero over zero. That's the indeterminate form zero over zero. We are now looking at the indeterminate form, including positive infinity. Indeterminate form within positive infinity. All right, so let us just look at the question. So I have a question done up already. So we're just gonna go through the question. So I'm gonna ask you to just, if you're having a dinner at this point in time, um, just, 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 Lend me one eye and you can use the other eye and look into the face. All right, let's go. So the question says, we need to determine the limit of the function as x tends to infinity of x to the fourth minus x squared plus seven over two x to the fourth minus six x cubed plus two. All right. Now, what I want you to understand with me is if x is infinity, it means that infinity and I raise it to the fourth power, blow up. Enough more infinity that. And if a minus a x squared, which is an infinity squared, it's still not enough because this number is already a bigger number than this one. Talk true. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So I still we have an infinitely large number in the numerator. And then we have add seven to it. So the number is still going to be infinity. So that's why I have my infinity right here. So let's go again. This is two times infinity to the fourth, so blow over. So even though I, I, I raise it to the fourth power, I'm going to multiply by two, so I'm going to end up with enough more infinity. But watch this. This is minus six times x cubed. This is still a bigger number than this one, don't it? Yes, sir. So I still going to have an infinitely large number in the denominator. And I'm adding two to it, so I still going to get infinity. Then, sir, what is infinity? You don't know. Remember last class we spoke about 10 could be something that is infinitely large. Then we'll move on to 100. Then we'll move on to 1,000. Then we'll move on to 10,000. And I don't think we did 100,000 because by the time we reached 10,000, we were able to see that the limit was tending to 1. All right? So we never needed to go any further. So I can say to you that this here goes this. No, it's easy. The questionnaire easy. And I'm going to get you to a point today before we leave in another yeah, you still have enough time. Good. I'm going to get you to a point today where it is that I'm going to give you a question. I think I wrote that question. I wrote two questions today for you that you can just look at the question and tell me the answer. And I'm going to see those of you who are really paying me attention in class today. So watch what Sir is doing. I'm very mindful for not telling you some stuff because I want to see how many of you are following. Watch me. When you get a limit and it tends to positive infinity, 
We now go yes, no number. What we are going to do is looking at the function and see which one of them are the bigger one. And we see say x to the fourth are the bigger one up here, so. And we look and see say x to the fourth are the bigger one down here, so. Do you agree that x to the fourth is the is is largest um, term right in, in the numerator and the denominator? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so what we are going to do, we are going to divide every single term. Watch this. The one year, the one year, the one year, this, this, and this by the x to the fourth. So we are looking for the biggest one. And when we find the biggest one, everything we are going to divide by it. You know, when you look a bit and smell the rule, it's like how Jermaine, a peer trouble music, you might have watched it in a peer trouble music again. Everyone and brother and sister, them get eaten with him. Because when Papa come on, Papa now go say, who did this? Papa does the same lamb shade, bro. And everybody get eaten. All right? Because I am not interested to find out which one going to be, every one of them going to be divided by the x to the fourth. So watch me. You notice everything is over x to the fourth. X, x squared is over x to the fourth. This seven is over x to the fourth. The two x to the fourth is over x to the fourth. The six x cubed is over x to the fourth. The two is over x to the fourth. Yeah, man. So that's going to be my second step. Put that on your forehead. You have to also be careful of the arrangement here because the man could have put x to the fourth down here. So, so not because you see the x to the fourth appears as a first term in the numerator, as the first term in the denominator, means say every time I yes, you're gonna find them. The one that could have been done yes, it could have been right yes, this could have been yes, it could have been yes, it could be anywhere. Look through the whole numerator for the bigger one. Look through the whole denominator for the bigger one. The bigger one sometimes can be in the denominator. So I could have given you x cubed right here, so. And the x four down here, so. So not because up here says x cubed, you can divide up here by x cubed. You look for the biggest one in the whole something. And you're going to divide through the biggest one in the whole something. So if you have an x cubed, so, an x squared, and the bigger one, and the x to the fourth down here, so it no matter. You still divide everything by the bigger one. All right, that's a that step there. Let's go. That one, I cancel the one, yeah. See, just a bam, bam. The one that go in another one yeah, and leave two times on your see it here. It cancel the four and leave two of this. The one that have nothing to cancel, we'll make it stay right there. So, so the one that cancel the one yeah, bam, bam. The one that go in another one and yeah, leave one of the x. So we have six over x. See it right there, so six over x. And the one that have nothing to cancel, bam. So because me like to see things clear, me I'll go rewrite it. So me I'll just put one because this one will cancel. So leave the one, we'll go put the one right there. So the one that we made one over x squared, see it right there. So. The seven over x to the fourth ain't change, we'll put it back. The one that cancel the one I leave one and one times two are two. This cancel this and leave only one x. So we made negative six over x. The one I never in the game at all, so you're gonna write him back. Now watch me right here. So you're gonna get the question, divide through by the something, you're gonna cancel the something, rewrite the something so you can see what is it. I will say to you, rewrite the something. When you rewrite the something and you see what I go on, hear my story. It is my story. You may have to stick to it. It is going to become your story. You must also stick to it. As x tends to infinity, the one here, the fractional form, the one here, the other fractional form, the one here, the next nether fractional form, and the one here, the last nether fractional form, are go all go to zero. Sir, I don't understand. Can I explain, please? Thank you for asking. Take out your calculator, Sonny, please. Every one of you. I don't want a phone, I don't want a computer calculator. I want your calculator. You must have a calculator for calculus one and two. You yeah, and your calculus two teacher can fight about it, but for sure, for calculus one, you must have your calculator. All right, let's go. One divided by. <clears throat> Mm -mm. Let me show you how to do it. Press one for me, please, on your calculator. And I'm assuming that you guys don't have a natural display calculator. If you do have a natural display calculator, you can let me know, and I can walk you through the algorithm of it. So for most of you, you may have the, the other cheap version. So let me go through with that one. <clears throat> you can press one. Then again, look to the left of the calculator. Again, so one button will say A, B, C. Touch it one time. When you touch it, you're going to open one parenthesis, one bracket, looking at the middle of the calculator above 7, 8, 9, you're going to find that. You open the bracket, then you're going to put, mm -mm, say, 
100,000. 100,000 is one with five zeros. So you press one with five zeros and then you will close the parentheses. And then you can look now above the open bracket. You can say either x squared or an upside down v. If you see x squared, just press x squared and then press equal. For those of you who see x squared, just press the x squared and then press equal and tell me what you get for the answer. Those of you who don't see it, you can press upside down v and then press two and then press equal. Tell me what you get for the answer. I get one to negative 10. All right. So one times 12. 10 to the, you get two to 12? All right. So one times 10 to the um, negative um, 10. Million, number of 100,000. You can't have that, miss. There's no way you can have that. Try and look to see that it's a one times 10 to the negative something. Yes, sir. That's yeah, one, one times, times 10 to the negative 12. All right. Okay. So what, let us use one times 10 to the negative 12. <clears throat> 1 times 10 to the negative 12 is something that is written in standard form. So 1 times 10 to the negative 12 is saying 0 0.000, 11 zeros and then a 1. So to negative 12 is with a 0 point, 11 zeros and then a 1 because it's 12. So you have 12 digits after the negative number. Now guess what? It may have 0 0.000000000001. How much that work out to be? To zero. See it now? Anybody? Somebody? Zero. All right. That means you see it. So, what I'm saying to you, the rule says once I have a constant in the numerator and a variable in the denominator and the variable gets exceedingly large, that whole fraction is going to tend to zero. I just showed you. Outside of class, you can go play around with it and you can see it on your own. Let me say it one more time. <clears throat> Once I have a constant in the numerator, so what do you mean by a constant? A whole number. There's no variable there. Oh, that means, sir, that the numerator is not moving. Very good. The numerator is very stable. It now go nowhere like the one. It now have nowhere to go. But you know what is happening with the denominator? The denominator is moving and getting larger and getting larger and getting larger and larger and larger and larger and larger and larger and larger. When you evaluate that fraction, best believe that you're going to get zero. Seven over x, x to the fourth, we're going to give you zero. Six over x, we're going to give you zero. Two over x to the fourth, we're going to give you zero. Let me ask you a question to see if you're thinking. Which one of these four terms here that will go to zero? Tell me which one or ones will go to zero faster. Six over X. Okay. Um, Kerika, you are new. See it. The class I get large, you know. Mm -mm. So repeat the question. I have to go speak the class that I get large. Um, so I'm saying to you, let us look at this one here. Welcome to Kerika. Let us look at this and thanks for your answer. Let us look at this one here. Um, we have one over x squared, seven over x to the fourth, six over x and two over x to the fourth. Which one or ones of these fraction is going to zero much faster? Seven. Is it? You said seven? Seven is not a fraction. Seven over x to the four. Seven over okay, x squared. One over x squared. One over x squared. Uh, one over x squared. 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 OK, I hear you, Jeremy. One over x squared. OK, Nesta, let me start with you. Since you came in first. Say so seven, seven over x to the fourth, Nesta. Why? Why do you think that moves fast? Uh, I'm going to guess, man. <laughs> what do you know? Sure, one over All right, what do you mean, six over, over x? x? And, OK, um, Kirika, so I hear you say six over x. Hmm. Why, why, why do you say six over x, Kirika? And I'll tell me, say this. Um, sorry, because I'm thinking about what you said before. And with the example, the one over um, 100,000 squared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the zero, the point zero, 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 whatever, one, it was far removed from the zero because Kirika, it was larger. I'm going to stop you. Um, 
because your explanation is correct based on what I just said, but you have selected the wrong answer. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you why. In the interest of time, the seven over x to the fourth is going to go to zero much quicker. You know why? Because the x to the fourth, the value in the denominator is going to be so large. It's going to be larger than the x squared, and it's going to be larger than the x. So these two fractions will go to zero quicker. If, if you don't believe me, you remember, you know, this x, if I put six over, six over 10, it's going to be 0. 0.6, mm -hmm. right? But if I put 6 over 100, it's going to be 0. 0.06, dark root. Mm -hmm. And if I put 6 over 1,000, it's going to be 0. 0. 0.006, don't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the, the, the larger the, numer the denominator becomes, is the quicker the fraction goes to zero because 0 0.6 is, is not so much of zero, you know, because 0 0.6, if you round up, you're going to get one. Mm -hmm. But 0 0.06, when you round up, you're going to get 0 0.1. So it is going faster to zero when the denominator goes to zero quicker. Talk truth. When I'm not seeing it, when I'm not answering it, when I'm not seeing it. I right, yeah, understand. Sir, that yeah, man, yeah, yeah, man. So answer me then, man. So I can know, so I'm not talking to myself alone. All right. This is the time for me not to say yeah, wait, wait. Go ahead, Nesta. Like what you did the first one. Could you, mm -hmm. let me see. You could have do it with any one of them and it would have stemmed mm -hmm. to zero. Which any one of them? Yeah, man. All of them have got zero, you know, Nesta. All of them have oh. got zero. Okay. Yeah, um, Anika, unmute, please, and talk to teacher. You see, I keep telling you, you know. When you don't come to class and don't talk to teacher, teacher go call up on you. So if you don't want to talk to teacher, teacher still have a call on you. Nika boo, talk to teacher. All right, Nika. Hi, oh, you do today, Nika. You all right? Quite fine, yes, sir. Oh, you're quite fine. All right, Nika. Tell me what it is that you're understanding so far. All right, so sir, I understand so far that the, uh, sir, which part, which part you want from the beginning to the end? All right. I like okay, let, okay, all right, fair enough. Let me be specific. Um, which one of these will go to zero quicker, Nisa? 37 and x over 4. So because you said that the larger it will it will go quicker. So the larger zero. who? The larger who, honey? The larger the denominator be. Very good. Will go quicker, quicker to zero. And do you agree with that, honey, Bunji? Do you agree with that, Anika? So I can't say I agree, sir, because I was not, when you were doing the calculation, I was looking for a calculator. So I can't say I agree, but I just heard explanation to the one that the Dina when it's large, will go to, a, right. to zero. What I like, what I like about you, Onika, is your honesty. And um, I, I, I appreciate you not saying to me that you agree and you don't have a clue with teacher talk about. So I like that honesty. Um, Davio, you're next. Unmute for me, please. Hi, sir. Right. Okay, honey, buddy. So you do. You good? Yeah, I'm fine. All right, good. So Anika says she agrees with me um, that based on my explanation that the 7 over x to the 4 and the 2 over x to the 4 will go to 0 quicker. Do you understand what I was explaining? Why those two will go quicker than the, than the others? Um, Sir, to be honest, I wasn't following what you were saying sir because what i did when you asked mm -hmm. the question was put x to be 10 mm -hmm. and then i would work out the fraction sir and that's how i would agree that the 7 over x to the 4 and 2 over x to the 4 would be go to zero first quicker right, fair enough fair, fair enough and i appreciate your honesty also right now <clears throat> For those of you who are just coming to class, this teacher here is not one who, when students come and, 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 and you know, when they tell me a lie, I get really agitated. I hate when people lie to me. So if you come to me and just tell me the truth, make me cuss you and say, Dave, pay attention. Anika, pay attention. You say, after me, say, pay attention, me forget about it. But you say, Dave, Anika, tell me one lie. It linger, linger, and I'll three class down the rhyme. We still remember it. So I love your honesty, all right? But I'm going to ask one more person, and then I'm going to be, and I don't know why it is that it's baptism by fire, you know. It's the other new people that will come class, you know, so only me are called from. So, 
who are the next new person in clause? Kariko, you know, why am I wanting to call upon you, Kariko? Kariko, unmute from for teacher. Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to ask you the same question. And if you don't, if you don't understand it, I'm giving you permission to call upon Arthur, um, Arthur to, 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 to to answer the question because she knew too. All right. So if you don't understand it, just call upon her and say, Barrett, take over. Question. So I just said a while ago, I asked a question, which one or ones of these will move quicker to zero? And I gave an explanation and I told you that it's seven over X to the four and the two over X to the four will move quicker. Do you understand why these two fractions will go to zero quicker than the others? Sir, you said because the bigger the denominator, the quicker it will get to zero. Fair enough, press pause. Don't say not another word. So, because I see it, you trust me, so you're saying that okay, it will go there. But do you see why it goes to zero quicker? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay, tell me why. Sir, um, well, I think I see it. When, tell me, no? <laughs> when I tried to um, say the first, the first answer that I had, six over X, mm -hmm. when I tried to reason that one, it's like it would take longer because I'd have to break it down more. I don't know if I'm explaining it correctly, but it's like you'd have to take more steps to break it down to end up getting to zero. Very good. I'm going to buy a bag of tigers um, and a Carlsbad juice. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. I, 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 yeah, man. I'm going to buy right. can get 100 dollars banana chips at a crossroads too. But, you know, I like that. Yeah. I like what it is that you're saying because you are, you are following what is, what is happening. And I'm going to come back to you, um, Kiriko. Next on, go ahead, Pops. <clears throat> Sir, I want to think kind of the two me off, you know, the, the calculation part with the calculator because the symbols I was looking for them, but mm -hmm. I don't know if you could probably just like write it down in the chat, like the steps, and that would have been more easier. I think you say you look at ABC, something like that, but on mm -hmm. my calculator, I see a ABS, so I'm going to for the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's right. The ABS is a different button. Fair enough. And um, when I'm when I'm sending out the notes, I can make an adjustment next on um, to do the algorithm. So I can write something to say All algorithm right. um, so that you can you can you can see. But for the interest of time, because there's I, I, if you say that look look, like, look your next one, I say, can you do these by inspection? I want you to go and see this by inspection before we go, but I really want to get this point. It don't make sense and move on if you don't see this, all right? So I really want to, you to, to see what is happening here. So do me a favor, do me a favor. Um, you know, this is, forgive me. I understand the signs of the times. I am 100% sold on online teaching, 100%. I love it, but, yeah. You know, people have, when, when people go foreign, they no longer use house brooms, sweep up the floor, they use this, 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 this robot and they just put the robot down and turn it on and robot go ahead and, and sweep. Me not like that because robot can't get my corner. So me want my mop and my broom to sweep. But the truth of the matter is, when we do all of this here, I really want you to get the nitty gritty of what is happening. Because I want, when we do this this one time, we're not going to see what is happening. And this is what the online teaching now has taken away from me because I could have gone on the board and draw two columns, but never asked me to draw the two columns. My writing tablet is misbehaving. I need to go and fix it. Do me a flavor. All of you, find a clean sheet of paper. And I want you to write four columns for me. One over X to the, to the second power, seven over X to the fourth, six over X and two over X to the fourth. Quickly. I want you to see this. Um, Karika said she agreed with me and she was able to, well, the one that came very the, the closest to what it is I, I wanted to hear. And I'm very proud of that, but I want you, I want you all to be convinced. <clears throat> so you're going to write four columns for me. Um, oh, Lord Jesus, help me. Um, okay, how do I do this now? Can I do it? I insert. 
Um, should I get a table with four? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. Um, All right, come on guys, I want you to all participate in this exercise. It's very important. <clears throat> very, very, very important. You see, when you learn something one time, copy. You don't have to go relearn it because you've already learned it. You see, if you leave the class and don't learn something, you might come up a class you still have questions. So once I do this and I catch it, there is no way that I have to come back to it. So watch what I'm doing, please. Um, Come session for you because you want to do that part. Uh, put it on screen. All right, so ah. Distribute columns evenly. All right, good. <clears throat> and I can centerize all of them something here. All right, good. All right, watch me now. So this is my proof. Um, Rockstone. I need to put column to the left. Insert, 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 insert. Um, column to the left. All right. Um, I'm going to put x equals x equal um, 10, then I have to call this 20. No, not 20. x equals 10, x equals 100, x equals 1000. And hopefully, by then you can see the trend. If not, I put in another column or two. All right. <clears throat> and I'm going to call this x. I'm going to call that t something here and just call that x. Um, x. All right, so so these are my x values. When x equals 10, x equals 1. Right, do me a favor now. <clears throat> 1 over one over 10 squared equals how much? Quickly, 1 over, you remember x is equal to 10, so it's going to be 10 squared. So 1 over 10 squared is going to be equal to how much? Talk, talk to, talk to me. 0. 0.01. 0. 0.01. Point zero, zero point zero one. Okay, one over hundred squared will be how much? Hundred squared is ten thousand. Zero point zero zero one. Zero point zero zero one. Three. Zero point zero zero one. Come on, talk it again. It's supposed to be zero point zero 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 one. Point zero 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 one. All right, good job. And then one over that square going to be zero point zero 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 one. Talk to me. <clears throat> if it is five zeros and then a one after the decimal point. Yes, sir. All right, good. Now, um, 7 over 10 to the 4th, how much that gives you? 7 over 10 to the 4th, tell me how much that gives you. Sorry, yeah, 10 to the 4th, I'm correct. 7 over 10 to the 4th gives you how much? 0 0.0007. 0 0.007? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Correct. And then 7 over... 100 to the fourth. <clears throat> um, zero, seven zeros and then a seven. And a seven. Seven zeros? Yes, sir. And then a seven. Seven zeros and a, and a eight or a seven. Okay. And a seven. All right. Tell me what the other one is now. Thousand. Seven over thousand to the fourth. How much? Equal how much? Um, eleven zeros and yes, a seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and a seven. Don't. Yes. Sir. All right. Yes. Then, now, six over ten is going to be zero point six. Don't it? Yes. Sir. And then zero point zero six. Don't. Or the easy mm. one. The mechanic of my head and zero point zero zero six. Don't. Yes, sir. And then two over ten squares are how much? Zero point zero. Two, ten to the fourth, sorry. Three zeros and a two. 
Oh, to yes, the sir. And then two over 100 to the fourth, how much? Um, seven zeros and a two. Seven zeros. Let's use seven zeros. Seven zeros? One, two, yes. three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> and a two. Mm -mm. All right, and then the one of them be low. Whoa. Level zero. Enough. How much? Eleven zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and a two down. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is what I'm, you know, guys, is the first time explaining this this way um, to any group of students. And I really want to get what is happening. Oh, let me go back to this and just took off that stuff. All right, good to go. Let me save this because if I lose this, I start to cry. All right, let's go. <clears throat> let us look in the first column here. Which one of these here, which one or ones is closest to zero right here, so? The one year, the one year, the one year, and the, okay, let me The fourth one, sir. The fourth one is closer to zero? Yeah. So what about this one? This is not closer to zero? Okay, let's just compare them. Second this is zero. Very good. The second and the fourth is basically the same. It's just that because of the number of the numerator. So you recognize that the, the numerator tells you what it ends with. 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 So once you have a constant in the numerator and a constant in that it alone in the numerator and no variable side of it, it is going to end with that number, right? So what mm -hmm. I'm saying to you is this is 0 0.1. Even though this work ought to be zero, you know, this is a closer number to zero than this one is. Remember, when we're doing the intuitive approach, remember, so we have to go down to 4.0001. Can we use the 4.1 or the 4.01? Talk through. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Right? Right. So the more zeros we have in between is the smaller it gets. So this mm -hmm. number close, closer to zero, so is this one. Mm -hmm. The one year is zero, you know. But guess what? The one I reach zero faster before it than this, don't it? Yes, sir. And the one I reach faster. So guess what now? Which one of these is the slowest to reach to zero? 0 0.6. Very good. So you see, you catch it. A carry for that? Let me see. A carry for that? Yes, sir. Now, very good. So I'm trying to get the voices here. So you need to talk to me. So you see, this one reached slower. And then which one is the next slower? In the row uh, or the column? In this one. Yes. The one. Very good. And which one is the next slower one? These two are in the same, right? So we did two, sir. Very good. So what I'm saying to you is that this is the slowest to reach the zero. Then this one, but them two you are going neck to neck, Shelly and Fraser Price and Elaine Thompson. Mm -hmm. but because it's a one and seven now, the one you look like a Shelly and the one you look like Elaine. All right, let us go. Which one of these is slowest to get to zero? Two, two. Which one of these is slowest to get to zero? Listen to my question. One with the six, sir. The one with the zero six, don't. Oh. Oh. Yeah, man. So the one you are who now? The one you are uh, uh, who they come now in the race? Shatari. I hope you do not charge me for this, you know. This is Shatari, you know. This is Shatari. But guess what? When you look on the one, you know, this is Elaine. This is Elaine around 10.54. And this is Shelly around 10 point no for more, right? And then no, the, the one you last. And if you look at this one, the one is still last. So guess what? The one you want dead last something. You know why sir sure know that this one is dead last something? Because it only have an X. It don't have no power there. So it, the denominator is not moving as fast as this one. But this one's still not moving as fast as this one and this one. Why, sir? Because these two are raised to the fourth power. So once I see an, a constant in the numerator, as I'm seeing here, and as these numbers get bigger, x to the fourth and x to the fifth, it means that this one goes to zero faster than this one here that was at the x and that this one that was at the x squared. Does that make sense now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. Go ahead, let's go. Let's go, sir. Do you have a question or was that sir, raised hand? Sir, it wasn't me. Oh. All right, never mind. I just lowered your hand. All right, cool. Now, let me stop right here. So I'm happy that you guys are seeing it now. Let me stop and ask a question. Is there anybody in the class now not understanding why I said that the x to the fourth, this one, and this one gets to zero close, I mean, faster than this one and this one? Talk to me now. Are you all seeing it?
guys, can you just answer me, please? We have yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Right. Yeah, man. Thanks. 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 Thanks for answering. Yeah, man. I want you to answer me, man. Right? So we can do this stuff. All right. Good. So this is just a little proof. Proof. P R O O F. All right. Good. <clears throat> so now, let us go back to the question. So what is now happening is that because we know say all of them fractional form, you have to go to zero. All of them fractional forms, you're going to go to zero. Because see, can we just sit at the table and show you? All of them will go to zero. We can just say, you know what? Me bright, zero. So this is a negative zero, a positive zero, negative zero, positive zero. See, can we just ping them in on the something? One minus zero plus zero are one. Two minus zero plus that are two. So I can say to you that the limit of this function tends to a half. The limit of this function tends to a half. All right? Now, I end up into this question like why do this one here now. Oh, negative. We're going to look at some stuff by inspection. The word here. <clears throat> Let us look at this here. <clears throat> we start with our original question here. So, and we see that this is x to the fourth, and this is x to the fourth. Right? So we recognize that in the numerator, we have a highest power as x to the fourth. And in the denominator, we have a highest power also of x to the fourth. So we know say that term here and that term here are going to be the biggest terms. Uh, when I divide these two terms, them two are going to cancel because they are the biggest term. But the other terms are going to go to zero. Everybody can see that? Let me see it one more time. I don't think you see it. Yes, yes sir. sir. Uh, very good, Jermaine, and, and, and whoever it is that was. Um, so let me say it one more time for those who are not seeing it. Um, so x to the fourth is the biggest term in the numerator. Sir, you keep calling this biggest term. I mean, no, see, biggest term. Sir, seven or bigger than one. That's not what I'm talking about. Remember, seven is a constant. So seven has nowhere to grow. So seven will always be seven. The x squared is big, you know, but not as big as x to the fourth, because when this x and that x are catch the same number as 10, 10 squares is 100. But the one of 10 squares is 10,000. So that one is still 100 and the one of their 10,000. So that one is bigger. All right? So x to the fourth is going to be the bigger term in our numerator here. But it is also the bigger term in the denominator because both of them are x to the fourth. All right? But sir, x cubed, mm -mm, it must be like that one here. 10 cubed is 1,000. But 10 to the fourth is 10,000. 10,000 more than 1,000. Give me $10,000 right now. You can't give me $1,000 to you know. But would I prefer the 10,000? All right? Now, look at what happens. Them two here going cancel out. Them two here going cancel out. And everything else inside of the something will move to zero. So technically, I'm only going to be interested in them two here. Because the one that goes zero, the one that goes zero, the one that goes zero, the one that goes zero. Sir, all you know, see, Tessa, we're dividing through everything by x to the fourth. You notice everything in the denominator is x to the fourth. Everything here is in the denominator is x to the fourth. And when we twerk it and twerk it and twerk it and cancel it and cancel it and cancel it, we catch this. And then Sir say, as it tends to, as x tends to infinity, the sign right or so, mm -hmm. then all of them something are going to tend to zero. And see so the proof is served between right or so and show you right there so. And then we can get half as an answer. Everybody see that? Yes, sir. All right. Do you see why this tends to one? Yes, yes, sir. sir. Yes, right. sir. Rubbish. Unmute for me, please, Papa. Yes, sir. All right, sir, Fraser. If you get yeah. this right, if you get this right, German being here, $1,000. All right, let's go. All right. Tell me why, why this answer tends to one. Explain to me why it goes to one. Sir, because um, X to the fourth is the bit larger number in the board. The numerator and the denominator mm -hmm. and basically I can put everything over x to the fourth and mm -hmm. all of them are, all of the denominator will end up to zero. All of the so. other terms going to end up to zero. <laughs> right? So, so I want you to use the correct term. So all the other terms will end up to zero. So we end up have one over one which is equal to one, don't it? Yeah. All right. Everybody agrees with that? Yes, yes. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Um, I'm going to stop here one minute because this is the end of my class pretty much. I have two minutes, but I want to stop here here because I want to see, I want to take up the answer to see if you guys are.
um, seeing the stuff. I don't want to put the answer there because another time I say, sir, the answer is that. You want to see if you really catch it. And if you don't catch it, you go good. Request a night chat, sir. No, mommy, not put it in a chat. I'm good with it, you know. Watch this. All right. So I still give you a hint for this one for number eight, you know. Look at number eight by inspection for number eight. What is the answer for number eight? Two fifths. Two fifths. Jermaine, why I say two fifths? Um, the bigger, the bigger the X5, the X fifth, the fifth. square out. Mm -hmm. And then everything is going to zero, so I get two or five. All right, very good. <laughs> Jeremy, no, don't unmute. You can't just impress like that and then decide to just go away. Number nine is also Seven yearns. Seven or two. Huh? Negative seven over two. Huh? Negative seven over two. Oh, very nice. Very nice, Jeremy. Very, very nice, Jeremy. Very nice. I, um, I'm very impressed. Oh, so much the nice. Eh? Oh, oh, so much the nice. So, mathematics is a study of patterns, and somebody in the class said, I'm going to go with man. I'm going to swear Jeremy, I thought about you now. Where him get them the number from? Don't worry about it. Teacher is here to help you. All right. Very nice, Jeremy. All right. I know why it is very nice, because I said something in particular, and I know, dang, time is against us. I said something in particular. And what I said, okay. Let me not jump there. Let me just do these two things. I can't do it in two seconds, two minutes, yeah, a minute. Here, the what largest. Jay, just pack the juice over this side. Um, I'll leave. Um, all right, it's all right. I just get it. Um, you think she should love me. All right, look, we have all of this here. So the highest term is x to the fifth in the numerator. And here in the denominator, the highest term is also x to the fifth. So we know in the back of our heads that this way and go to zero, that this way and go to zero, that this way and go to zero. And the x to the fifth will cancel to x to the fifth. I'm going to let two fifth talk truth. You see that? Yes, sir. All right. Sure. No, I said something in class last Thursday that almost every single thing that we do for the calculus so we can double check our answer. Anybody heard when I said that? Everything from the side. Put them yes, sir. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So, so this is what it is that um, I show you. It's one of the things that I'm talking about. It's Actually, not... yeah, no. I think I, I keep unmuting. I keep muting Arthur and she keep unmuting herself. All right, let's go. Last one, because I know time is against us. Last one. What, why I'm so impressed with what Jermaine said a while ago is that I deliberately put the X to the fourth at the front and thought he would have said to me, so the answer is three over one, which is three. But he was smart enough to look through the numerator and recognize that X to the fifth is the highest power. And then he also looked through the denominator and recognized that X to the fifth. So when even Sir mixed it up, he said, Sir, you can't fool me, you know. You can't fool me. So Jermaine said, because X to the fifth. So what Jermaine did was to isolate. What he did was to isolate these two terms because these are the ones that we are interested in. And then he recognized now that this one is going to go to zero, this one is going to go to zero, and that one is going to go to zero. So when I cancel the x to the fifth and the x to the fifth, I'm going to be left with negative seven over two, and that is our correct answer. I will go through the rest of these stuff. Um, you know, it 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 really isn't um, anything much difficult than this, more difficult than this. The only thing that I'll say to you as I close is that even though you can see the answer if you get a question like this you still are going to be required to show the working because they're not going to give you five marks or six marks just to write down one half. You have to show them the methodology, but at least you know what answer you're supposed to be getting when you do the stuff. All right? Am I clear? Yes, sir. Well, I really hope that you, I hope that you learn something. I won't even stop and ask you for learning anything tonight because we're two minutes over the time. But for those who are coming, I really hope that you, you get something from class tonight. I really hope that who have been here with us all of last week, that it concretizes some, some little lessons in, in stuff. I won't send this off immediately because um, I need to put in some algorithm something and I really hope I don't drop asleep. But anyhow, I will send it off into the WhatsApp group. If you're not connected to the WhatsApp group just yet, um, please ask nicely. You will be added to the group. Have a good one, guys. I'll see you on Thursday. Remember, for those of you who are new, um, we go from 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock on a Thursday, right? 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock on a Thursday. 
So, um, Carico, come out from my phone. Oh, God, have mercy. Uh, sorry, sir. Um, okay. I'm going to add me to the group, and I don't have, I don't have the access to the email. I, I'm going to try to set it up back. Um, the old email that I have is not working. Um, drop your, drop your number in the chat. Somebody will add it to the group. I, drop I, your I did. I already did. Come yeah, on, somebody will do it for you. Somebody will do it for you. Hey, Carrie, see me and you. We follow out to know, but anyhow, guys, run on to your other class because I'm holding up. I'm somebody sorry. Carrie. Yes, one. The, re the recording. So soon they end up on YouTube. Um, as soon as it is released to me, it takes a couple of hours. So maybe by tomorrow morning when I turn, it may come okay. on. I'll just spin it in the, the YouTube channel. Bless you. Okay. Take care. Okay. Have can a nice I just give you my email so you can send the notes to me because I, I don't have the access to the um, Excelsior email as yet. I, the old one that I have, I need to, to update to the new No, man, just email. put it, it is easier to put a number in the, in the chat and they will just I add it to the it. group. Yeah, All just right. put a number in the here. chat. Hopefully, I'm added to the group. Okay. Yeah, please. Um, my able. Um, Sash, is is it you that is um the I don't know who it is. Sir. Yes, one. Who is who is responsible for the are you I am are you sir. The, are you, okay, thank you. Please have you answered it us um capture Arthurine um Arthurly um yes, I got them. okay bless you. Have a good one guys. I'm I'm in a lot of a class is waiting to come in later. Yes, sir. Take care.